I recently got a letter in the mail from my private health insurance stating that um, the insurance company will no longer cover the medical drug abuterol. Uh, for those of you who do not know what abuterol is, it's a drug for asthmatics or people who have respiratory problems. It's a quick relief drug, but it doesn't cure the disease. It just manages the symptoms. It's one of those quick relief drugs that makes you breathe uh, quicker. Um, <laughs> the letter indicated to speak with my physician for a compatible drug. Um, I laughed hysterically when I received this letter. This is the letter right here. When I got this letter, I started laughing hysterically. If you've seen my previous videos, especially the series Bronx Citizen Cures His 14 Diseases, you would know that I do not take medical drugs anymore. I discontinued all my medication, all 14 of them. For two years now, I have been off of my medication, almost two years. Um, starting in May, I'm going to complete my two-year um, anniversary um, disease-free. I still got one more, but I still consider myself disease-free. I got rid of my blood pressure medication, my diabetes or diabetic medication, whatever you call it, uh, inhalers. They're all gone. They're actually all gone. The insurance company should have seen on their records that I no longer take these medications. I haven't been getting any refills. I haven't been refilling my, my uh, prescriptions. Why the heck are they sending me this letter? I have no idea. Maybe as a tactic to get some more drugs. Go on, go get some drugs. Go talk to your doctor. Could be a tactic. I don't know. One of those uh, uh, advertising tactics. Go get some drugs. Could be. I don't know. After I stopped laughing, <laughs> after I thought, I had a horrifying thought in my mind. It popped in my mind. My mind still functions, okay? Uh, every now and then, my brain stops functioning. So sometimes it comes back. And I started to think, what if there is a shortage on asthma medication or a shortage on um, a, a medical drug that people depend on to keep them alive, you know, like uh, insulin for diabetics, chemotherapy for cancer patients, uh, kidney dialysis. What if there's a shortage on those types of medication that's keeping you alive? Would you panic? I know I would. I would panic like crazy if I get a letter uh, stating that, you know, this drug is no longer covered or no insurance companies are covering uh, for those uh, drugs. Okay. I know what you're saying. I know what you're thinking. No, 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 Andres. That will never happen in our country. You don't know what you're talking about. You people from the Bronx are dumbos. <laughs> Call me what you wish. Okay. But I got rid of my 14 diseases out of 15. Okay. Still working on one. Okay. So you think I'm a dumbo. Okay. Uh, the dumbo from the Bronx. That's, that's what you're saying. Okay. Here's a clip from ABC New York News, a mainstream media, not alternative news, mainstream media, the news you folks watch on television every day. You know, it's the news media that always tells the truth and nothing but the truth. Okay. This was also covered on other mainstream media like CNN, um, NBC. It was covered everywhere. Okay, here is a clip on ABC New York News. It's New York warning us of an insulin shortage that is headed your way, not my way, your way. I cured my diabetes. Uh, I got rid of my diabetes. Insulin shortage that's headed your way. Watch the two-minute clip, and I'll be back to comment on it. We brought you last week on Good Morning Las Vegas. We have a better idea how a worldwide insulin shortage could affect you. Well, the study found that by 2030, 40 million people could be left without the life-saving drug. Here in Nevada, more than 12% of adults have diabetes, and tens of thousands more have the disease but don't know it. Dr. Dahlia Wach says one of the best ways to address the shortage is to reduce new cases. And for those of us that have genetically, you know, predisposed diabetes, make sure we catch our diabetes early. If you catch your diabetes early, hopefully then you could get by taking the medications, the pills. Well, Dr. Ox also says that we have to combat obesity, exercise more, eat healthier to prevent diabetes. Well, Chinese science. 
pretty scary stuff, huh? Imagine getting from your health insurance uh, company, whoever your insurance company is, a letter stating, due to the shortage of insulin and high prices, we are no longer covering insulin. Good luck. Imagine that. Okay. Thank God I got rid of my diabetes. Would you panic? Okay. Would that scare you? Would that scare the crap out of you? I would be horrified if I get something like that. I'm not here to frighten you, but it's a, it's scary nonetheless, man. This is scary. I'm here to prepare you for the future. I'm here to prepare you for the upcoming health disaster that is headed our way, and it's closer than you think. It is closer than you think. According to ABC News and other news uh, stream, uh, mainstream media um, that covered this story, this insulin story, by 2013, or if not sooner, um, there will be an insulin shortage. Okay, by 2013, could be sooner. Here's another sad. This is a sad story. This is a very sad story. NBC Deadline, mainstream media again, not alternative news. NBC Deadline covered a sad story about a mother who lost her son because of the high prices of insulin. Here's a two-minute clip, and I'll be back to comment on this story. 26 year olds are not supposed to die because they don't have insulin. But without insurance, Alex Smith couldn't afford the $1,300 a month to control his diabetes. So he tried rationing his insulin, empty vials found near his body. I was so heartbroken just to see that he had resorted to those type of measures. Seven million Americans depend on insulin to control their blood sugar. But with few competitors, the price has skyrocketed from $21 in 1996 to $320 per vial today. And many people require several vials each each month. After spending $524 on two vials for her daughter, a frustrated Doreen Rudolph's tweet went viral. I left the pharmacy and sat in my car and cried. I don't have the money. I have love and worry 24-7. A Yale University study finds one in four diabetics cuts back on their insulin because of cost. Mostly middle class Americans with limited insurance putting themselves at great risk. Over time, if the blood sugar is not in check, it leads to complications such as blindness, kidney disease, nerve disease, amputations. President Trump has promised to bring drug prices down, but his HHS secretary, Alex Azar, came from insulin maker Eli Lilly, which more than doubled insulin prices from 2011 to 2016. In a statement, Lilly says, in the last 18 months, we have introduced a number of initiatives to help reduce the amount people pay at the pharmacy and provide access to lower income people with diabetes. But for Alex Smith's mother, you know, the, the child that I gave birth to, my flesh and blood, I lost him because of pharmaceutical greed. A lifetime of heartbreak. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Very heartbreaking, right? No parent should have to go through that, watching their child suffer and die. I can only imagine what her son went through as he was dying. That is the most painful thing to experience, watching a loved one suffer and die, especially a child. The fact is, folks, this medical disaster is in its beginning stage. It's already here. It's already happening. It's, um, it's only a matter of time. Bang! It's going to hit us, and we're not, you're not even ready for it. You're not prepared for it. It's just going to hit you. It's going to happen. How many people in the USA alone, just the USA alone, will die without their insulin? Millions will die. Oh, heck, wouldn't that be an excellent way to reduce the population? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, claiming that there is a medical, uh, th there's a shortage on medicine. There's a shortage on this medicine. There's a shortage on that medicine. Again, I'm not here to scare you, but to prepare you for this disaster that's headed our way. You know, Joseph, a slave in a foreign country, Egypt, this is a story in the book of Genesis, uh, in the Bible. I'm going to get a little theological here, but there is a lesson to be learned in this story. Uh, this slave, Joseph, warned the Pharaoh of Egypt about an upcoming disaster. Uh, the Pharaoh had a dream, 
and his enchanters and his psychics uh, couldn't interpret the dream. They didn't know what the dream meant. Joseph told the Pharaoh that Egypt was about to suffer a seven-year famine that would devastate Egypt. Uh, the attitude of the Pharaoh uh, was like, who is this Hebrew slave that can interpret dreams? He's a nobody. He's just a slave. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. <laughs> Egypt is about to be in ruin. Okay, it's going to be ruined from this famine that is approaching. Many Egyptian citizens are about to die, including slaves, the animals, livestock. Joseph told the Pharaoh what he must do to save Egypt. Egypt prepared for this upcoming disaster. Egypt proactively prepared um, for the famine that's on its way. This slave Joseph saved Egypt and Egypt was spared. How did Egypt survive? They prepared in advance for the upcoming disaster. By the way, Joseph became uh, the second most powerful uh, man in Egypt. Okay, he became the governor. Um, you can say vice president to the pharaoh. Uh, not a bad promotion, huh, I would say, from a slave in prison to a governor <laughs> to the governor of Egypt. That's a I love that story, man. That story is awesome. However, the the point of the story here is that Egypt prepared for the disaster that was coming. Do you remember Y2K? The Y2K event supposedly at midnight of January 1st in the year 2000, all electronic devices would stop working. By the way, no one told us what time zone is this going to happen. Eastern time, <laughs> central time, is it Pacific time, mountain time? When is it going to happen? Nobody told us this. <laughs> Electricity, phones, uh, computers, they were all going to shut down. Pandemonia is headed our way. Everything was going to stop working. How did Americans prepare for this? Uh, how did everybody prepare for this disaster, not just Americans? We all started stocking up on non-perishable foods. We stocked up on water, batteries, flashlights, candles. Okay, Great advice by the media, by the way. Great advice by the media. Everyone was preparing for the disaster. Thank God nothing happened. Okay, Y2K, uh, Y2K came and left. Gone. What about now? Is anyone preparing for this health crisis that is headed our way? How do you prepare for a health crisis? It is imminent and evident. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Hey, the health crisis is already here. Okay, it's just not fully blown. Okay, it hasn't hit hard yet. But you know, the mainstream news media is not telling us how to prepare for this health crisis this catastrophe, this disaster that's headed our way. No one is telling us how to prepare. What about if there's an economic disaster, a financial crash? The debt right now, the USA debt, the national debt is $23 trillion. I say this nation is already bankrupt. I remember the national debt when I was in high school. It was like $3 trillion. It has increased eight times since I was in high school. And that was back in that, that was back in the days. Back in the days. Can you imagine what will happen when the economy collapses, whether you believe it or not? Can you imagine when the economy collapses? There are some that will say the economy will never collapse. How many of you people said that? How many people in uh, in Egypt? said, Egypt is fine. There's no famine coming. That's just to scare you. This slave is a conspiracy theorist. Kill him. Of course, off comes his head. Take off his head. Chop it off. <laughs> what about the Titanic? Some said that ship could not be sunk. Can This ship is never going to sink. Not even God can sink this ship. And a little iceberg, a little iceberg sank it. And over 1,500 people perished, okay? The media is not saying anything. They're not advising us what to do. 
They're telling us how to prepare. They're not telling us how to prepare for this disaster. You know why? Because they don't know how to prepare for this upcoming health crisis or uh, this economic crash that's right behind, right in the corner. They, the economy is going to crash and it's right in the corner. It's funny. The news media advises us all the time, don't shovel snow if you have a bad back. If you have a bad back, don't shovel snow. If you're suffering from back issues, you shouldn't shovel snow. You should get someone to do that for you. Or how about stay home? The snowstorm is bad. Stay home. But they're not telling you how to prepare for the upcoming financial crash or how to prepare when the insulin shortage begins. So how do you prepare for an economic crash or this health crash? crisis that's about to blow up in our faces. I got an idea. Stock up on insulin, asthma inhalers, stock up on all your medications. Oh, wait. Medicine, medics, all kinds of medicine, medical drugs have expiration dates, including as, uh, aspirins. They all have an expiration date. That's not going to work. That ain't going to work. Plus, even if you could stock up on all medications. If your community found out, they will kill you to get access to those drugs. Or the government can also confiscate those drugs because you have a certain amount in your hands that can lead to an intent to sell. Now you're going to prison for the intention to sell drugs, even though it was for you and your family. Mm -mm -mm. Once again, how do we prepare for this coming health disaster and economic disaster? If the uh, patriot um, Joseph was here today, he would tell you what I've been saying for over a year. Get rid of your diseases. You need to get rid of your diseases. If you get rid of your diseases, you don't have to worry and panic when you receive a letter like this in the mail. You don't have to worry about pharmaceutical companies not covering for certain drugs or pharmaceutical companies closing down during the economic disaster. And many will close down during the economic disaster. Okay, pharmaceutical companies are not gonna be here. Folks, it's simple. Get rid of your diseases. Put on dress. How do I get rid of my diseases? My doctor told me there aren't any cures for my disease. I'm stuck with my disease forever. Yeah, your doctor also told you lots of things and you're not getting healthier. You're getting worse. Diseases on top of diseases. Okay, that's what your doctor also tells you, right? Hey, psh, give me a break. Here it is, folks. Here's how to get rid of your diseases. I've been saying this already for about a year and a half. Number one, stop eating the 12 deadly foods that is causing the illness. Uh, you mean to tell me that there are foods that is, that's actually causing the disease? There's actually foods out there that's causing the disease? I may. Watch my video, the 12 deadly foods. And um, Oh my God, I forgot the name of my... You see, my brain just stopped working. <laughs> NutriWarriors.org. Thank <laughs> Watch the video, The 12 Deadly Foods. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this video here on YouTube, the thumbnail will pop up in the last 20 minutes of this video. It's going to be the last 20 seconds of this video. Just click on it and the video will begin. Also in the description field, um, I link the URL to the video. Okay, so that's number one, folks. Get rid of the 12 deadly foods. Abstain from the 12 deadly foods. Number two, take the 90 essential nutrients appropriate for your body weight every day. You need to take the 90 nutrients. Okay, not, not 89, not 70, 90 essential nutrients. Um, after you get rid of the 12 deadly foods, you take the 90 essential nutrients. You have to clean out your digestive system. Okay, your digestive system. You need to clean that out. Uh, your digestive system has been damaged by the inflammatory foods. Um, 
that you've been eating and that's what's causing the malnutrition and it's prevent you, preventing you to absorb nutrients. After 15 days, get rid of the foods, then take the 90th century nutrients. Number three, maintain an ORAC score of 150,000 or higher every day to keep your immune system healthy, strong, and boosted, baby. I have not gotten sick in almost two years following these three steps. Not a single headache, flu-like symptoms, trouble breathing, nothing, okay? And I was sickly, okay? I was always sick every other, every other week. Last year, my parents caught the flu, okay? And both had the flu shot. They got the vaccination. Uh, they don't take the 90th century nutrients and they eat whatever they want to eat. I've been trying to tell them, y'all you, you, got to stop eating all this junk. Okay, this is what's getting you sick. This is what's causing your diabetes. This is what, they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. My boarders uh, also caught the flu. Everybody in the house got sick. All but me. I didn't get any, I didn't get any of it. Oh, and my dog. My dog also is on the 90. And I have him on a gluten-free diet. I give him some good food. Okay, you need to keep your nutritional tank full. Got to keep it full with the 90. So when the disaster happens, you and your family will be okay. Well, health-wise, you and your family will be okay. But financially is another story when the, the economic uh, crisis happens. It's another story. Also remember, medical nutrition is also going bye-bye. Okay, medical nutrition is going bye-bye. You think this is going to be around when the economic disaster happens? No, that's going bye-bye too. Before the disaster, you may not have access. Even before, before the disaster, this is not going to be available, okay? How do I know this? Well, here it goes. There is an organization called Codex Alimentarius. You need to look this up. Uh, the organization is known as Codex Alimentarius, and they are planning to outlaw supplements. I kid you not. Well, not outlawed. I shouldn't say outlaw. They want to uh, discontinue over-the-counter supplements like medical nutrition, and you have to get them through a prescription only. They also want to reduce the dosage on medical nutrition as well and keep and keep it low. Hmm. I wonder why. Why lower the dosage? Plus, they they can even restrict the number of supplements per prescription per month. Okay? You know, for example, you, you can't have vitamin C, only one bottle per month and one prescription per month. They can actually do that. Okay? It's against the law for getting too many nutri uh, nutrients in your house. Why? Why do you think this is happening? Because they know a certain amount of dosage can actually reverse the disease. So they want to, they want to keep you sick so uh, you can continue to be slaves to the therapeutics that do not work. Okay? That is evil, man. Pure evil. They claim, oh, we're doing this because, to, because this is dangerous, you know. Nutrition is dangerous. You can overdose on this. Uh, we have to regulate this to protect you. Listen up, Codex Elementarius. Clean up the mess caused by the allopathic, addictive, poisonous, toxic drugs that's killing many. Fix the opioid problem that is killing many and is still in the market today. Fix the vaccine nightmare that we are having that's damaging and killing our children. Clean up your backyard first, okay? Before you come to my backyard and clean up the mess, which there is no mess, okay? You need to clean up your backyard before you come to ours. Stay away from our medical nutrition. Fix the problem that you guys have now, okay? You know, you should start, start with the vaccine. That'll keep you busy for a couple of years. Fix the other vaccine nightmare that we're having. Start with that. Unbelievable. Where's the outcry? Where are my fellow Americans fighting against this? It's only a few of us that's fighting against this. 
I know why. I know why. I know why majority of Americans are not saying anything and getting involved. You people are on the internet bitching about Star Wars, The Last Jedi, and how that movie sucked. Disney and Lucas and Lucas film turned woke. Oh my God, the leftists took over. They took over Star Wars. The social justice warriors have taken over Hollywood. Oh my God. Did you hear what Donald Trump said in this recording? He was talking about grabbing women's vagina. Okay. Did you hear that recording? This is what you spend your time on. Okay. While mommy and daddy, they're dying from cancer. Your sister is suffering from lupus. Grandma is suffering from Alzheimer's. Your child got damaged from vaccines, but you are bitching about Star Wars and Spider-Man and Doctor Who and the Oscars. That's important for you. Yeah, I understand. That's important for you. Let me tell you, that is a <laughs> that's a distraction, folks, to keep you busy. That's a distraction. That has been orchestrated on purpose. America... You're not paying attention, okay? You are preoccupied on what's happening on the left hand over here. Most of you are paying attention to this hand, the left, okay? You are not paying attention on what's happening over here, the right hand. More than half of Americans are sick with at least one chronic disease. How the hell did that happen? Because you're over here. You're paying attention to the left hand. Oh, Star Wars. Oh, they messed up my Star Wars. Doctor Who is ruined. Spider-Man. Oh, I hope they don't I hope they don't ruin Spider-Man. I can't take this anymore. You're not paying attention over here. The right hand. Mommy is dying and getting damaged. Children are getting damaged from vaccines. Over here. This hand. Okay? People are getting sick here. There's a problem over here. Let's fix the problem here before you bitch and complain of what's happening over here. Okay? The economic disaster is on its way. The shortage of insulin is around the corner. The health of America is getting worse, and you're busy bitching over here. You guys are bitching over here. Don't get caught off guard. Okay? Start paying attention to what's happening. Do something about it. Get involved. You need to get involved. Cut the crap over here on the left hand. Pay attention to what's happening over here. What happens if the economic crashes happens now? You're not going to be talking about Doctor Who anymore and, and, and all these movies that you claim that they got it got damaged by the leftists. You're not going to be screaming and yelling about you're going to be now asking questions <laughs> how do i how do i get medication how do i get this i'm diabetes you're going to be asking a lot of questions and by the way the internet may not be around when the economic disaster happens nobody's going to be able to afford the internet okay so remember get that get that in your mind okay you're going to be <laughs> in big trouble <sighs> I hope you enjoy this rant. <laughs> Every now and then I'll rant on my videos, okay? Back to preparing for this upcoming disaster. Number four, maintain tranquility. In other words, stay calm when the disaster happens. Don't panic. When you receive a letter like this in the mail, don't panic. Take it easy. Don't be like, oh, my God, the insurance company is not paying for my asthma medication. <laughs> Relax. Take it easy, especially when the disaster happens. It's going to be tough. People around you will be panicking and screaming, my medication, I'm dying, I'm going to die. I need my kidney dialysis. My answer, You need to keep calm. You got rid of your diseases, you're fine. People will be dying all over the place, including your community. You need to relax and be strong. You got to be strong. When fear comes upon you, especially when you panic, it can deplete your nutritional tank. Fear and stress depletes your nutritional tank. Remember, 
The idea here is to keep the 90th century nutrients in your body during the economic disaster. Keep it reserved until the big one hits. It's like Joseph and the Y2K, okay? They told you to, to store food and water. Now I'm telling you to store the 90 nutrients in your body and be ready when the disaster happens. I'm going to get uh, theological with you again. I'm going to get theological again. Perhaps this will encourage you. The Lord Jesus told the disciples a disaster is going to hit during the last days. Um, he said, and I'm paraphrasing, um, I don't tell you these things to frighten you. I tell you these things to prepare you in advance. Men's hearts are going to faint for the fear and what's coming upon the earth. In other words, what is he saying? Relax. You need to relax. Calm down. Everything is going to be all right. Let everyone else go crazy. You keep calm. Take it easy. Okay? You take it easy. The Great Depression, I believe, uh, lasted for 10 years, right? I think the economic crash uh, that's coming is going to last a little longer than that. So you really have to prepare for this. Also, stay away from workouts, uh, workout gyms, or, or doing any kind of aerobics, jogging. Uh, although I don't think gyms will be around during the economic disasters. Okay, plus I don't think people are going to be thinking about going to the gym when all hell is breaking loose on earth. Okay, people are going to be looking for drugs, food. Okay, when you sweat, you are sweating lots of nutrients. Keep your nutrients in your body, okay? Do not go to the gym during the economic disaster. Also, don't forget to abstain from the 12 deadly foods, okay? Take your 90 every day, your 90 essential nutrients every day, according to your weight. Maintain 150,000 ORAC score or higher, higher than 150,000 every day, and relax, okay? Keep calm while everyone is in panic mode. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Who is this man from the Bronx with a substandard education? Who is this man from the Bronx? He's not an authority of health and nutrition. He's a nobody. He's just a telecommuter that works from home in the Bronx in an attic. This is my attic here. This is where I do my work. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. I do work in an attic. This, this is your. This is my uh, proof right here. This is an attic. But at least I got rid of my diseases. I'm ready for the hell that's coming upon this planet. I hope it doesn't happen during my lifetime. I hope it doesn't happen during my life. I pray for the generation that will live through that. That's going to be a hell on earth. Remember, according to expert on ABC New York News and all the news media, commercial news media, mainstream media, they said that by the year 2030, it is the year the shortage of insulin will begin, if not sooner. The question is, will you be proactive like Joseph the slave in a foreign country? God warned Joseph when the famine was going to happen and how long it will last. We don't know when the economic uh, crisis is coming. We don't know when the disaster is coming. But the question is, are you preparing for it now before it happens?